the three R's, Reuse, Reduce, Recycle, by Nuria Roca, illustrated by Rosa M. Curto. Do you know the letter R? It is the first letter in three words that teaches different ways to fight pollution. It is the R in reuse, reduce, and recycle. Do you know these words? Reuse things that are still in good shape, such as your big brother's jacket. Reduce the amount of things we throw away, such as paper cups. Recycle old things to make new ones, such as a puppet out of an old sock. In the town where Paul lives, people throw their garbage bags into a garbage container at the corner. In the morning, a garbage truck empties the container and takes the garbage bags. Do you know where? To a garbage landfill or dump, which is a huge place in the mountains or in the countryside far from the city. In Paul's town, however, there are so many people and so much garbage is produced that every landfill is full already and nobody knows where to build another. So they have built a huge furnace called an incinerator to burn all the waste material. Nobody likes to live close by. People think the smoke coming out of the chimney is harmful to plants, animals and people. At Paul's school, they have talked about the huge amount of waste produced in just one day and they have decided to reuse as many things as they can. That means that now they will use every object many times until it breaks or cannot be used anymore. At his school, they paint both sides of all sheets of paper, use the empty cans of paint to keep paper clips and rubber bands, and use the pieces of paper left over to make wonderful collages. Do you have any other ideas? At home, everybody reuses as many things as possible. Paul wears the t-shirts that his big brother has outgrown and also plays with many of his old toys. Can you guess how many objects on the right page may be used over and over? Paul's brother outgrew his bike and now Paul rides it. And since he has no use for his tricycle anymore, he has passed it on to his cousin. Something else we do at home and at school is trying not to waste water or electricity because this way we help take care of our planet. It seems very little, but the drops of water from a leaking faucet could fill up a bathtub in a day. So keep the water and lights off when they are not needed, of course. When Paul and his family go shopping for food, they take their own baskets or bags made of cloth. By doing that, they won't have to ask for plastic or paper bags at the supermarket and will reduce the amount of plastic and paper made by factories. Reducing means using very little, only what is needed. Plastic bags are very handy, but sometimes they end up in the sea where they can be dangerous for animals. Turtles may take them for jellyfish and eat them, or they may get tangled up in the plastic rings used to hold cans together. It is very important not to litter the ground, the woods, the beach, the ocean, or the city. At Paul's school, they throw all paper and cardboard into a special street container. Then, trucks pick up everything and take it to a paper mill, where used paper and cardboard is shredded and washed until it becomes a pulp that is wet and soft. With this pulp, they make paper again. When it gets dried, we have recycled paper. Practically, everything can be recycled. Paper and cardboard, plastic objects, glass, cans. All these things are first shredded, ground or pulped and then they go through different processes that make new drinking cans, glass bottles, plastic containers. At school, we make paper paste out of torn and wet old papers. These are the things made with boxes and paper paste. Paul's parents have told him that food scraps can also be recycled. 
all food that otherwise would be wasted can be made into fertilizer which is food for plants. The fertilizer produced this way is called compost. The banana peels and lemon rinds Paul has just thrown into the garbage may become food for plants like all food scraps. That's great! But if we want to recycle, we have to put the waste in special containers. Now, in the kitchen at Paul's home, there is a container for things made of plastic, metal or glass and another for all the other garbage. Also, all newspapers and magazines are neatly tied in packages so that they also can be recycled. At some schools, they also collect used batteries. The children have been told batteries may not be recycled and that they pollute a lot. So it is very important not to throw them in the garbage. That's why the children have made a special container for them. Once it is full, they will take it to a recycling center where the metal from the batteries will be used to make new ones. The drawings to decorate the container are the work of Paul's class. Nice job, isn't it? If we waste less and recycle all we can, there will be less pollution and we will be able to live for a long time in our little planet, breathing smokeless air, swimming in clear waters and strolling through woods and countryside free from garbage. Paul thinks it is worth the effort. How about you?